friends, Masa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my top 10 times two tarot decks I never plan to part with. part two today. Two weeks ago I filmed part one video of the top 10 times two tarot decks I will never part with in which I shared with you my top 10 historic tarot decks that are the most essential ones to me in my collection in the historic category and today I'm coming to you to share with you my second lot of 10 decks and those will be my top 10 contemporary tarot decks that I don't see my tarot library without. As I mentioned in part one, and the link for you is below, I very much enjoy watching and filming these kinds of videos. Um, and uh, my intention for this top 10 times to feature to be annual, right, to be ongoing as around the same time next year, I'm planning to revisit these two parts, like these 20 dogs that I'm sharing with you. Uh, well, 10 last video part 1 10 today but yes i'm planning to revisit uh these videos to assess whether all these 20 decks uh would uh, have remained the same and uh also to add to the selection and grow my list if uh, it happens like that I'm drawn to other decks from my existing from existing decks in my tarot library or perhaps uh, there may be some deserving decks that would come onto my radar this year so if that happens if I acquire them maybe they will be added to this 20 next year to uh to continue to grow this list or i don't know maybe not maybe yes right so maybe i will add extra five to ten decks to this 20 for next year who knows we shall see but for me also this video uh and the previous one also the intention is for those videos to serve as a personal record of my tarot practice of my tarot taste for me and as i mentioned uh, i find these sorts of videos again i think I did touch on that in a previous video but that type of videos they help me to reflect on my collection on my decks and also to curate my tarot library better but now allow me to share with you my 10 contemporary tarot decks that I never intend to part with. All right, I have arranged my decks in the chronological order as in from the earliest tarot that I added to my collection to the most recent one. And we begin with uh, the Marseille tarot, and this tarot was my second tarot de Marseille deck ever. So they are the backs, and of course, many of you know that I'm talking about Pablo's Robledo, Robledo Marcella, and why uh, this tarot has made into my top contemporary uh, category, just because it is created by contemporary contemporary Cartier card master Pablo Robledo and while it has this classic historic look it is based it's not a restoration of one particular deck but rather is inspired by a number of classic Tarot de Marseille tarots like Nicolas Convert, Pierre Madenier, Chausson among others and uh, the colors in this tarot are delightful the um, artwork is just beautiful given it's pablo's work um the line work is superb nice cleaned out version that has this antique feel with the kind of more of white antique old looking backgrounds and uh, i don't think this tarot will ever leave my top whatever list 
since uh, I received it in 2016 up to now. It's one of the most used tarot in my tarot library. The card stock is wonderful. The card sizing is beautiful, lovely as well for my smaller hands. So yeah, this is the Pablo Robledo's Marcella. Next tarot is, um, well, they're the bags and, uh, and I'm very really thrilled that I can share this tarot with you because it's back in print, but from, uh, from its original creator, Eugene Vinitsky, and he releases, uh, uh, like I know that it's the second batch now that he's released on in his Etsy shop called Terramania. I, because I've had this tarot for a while, I, uh, my box got kind of destroyed, so I made myself a tin feature in the backing of this tarot. But this is Russian tarot Lubok, and uh, I'm showing you the Russian version, right, so two of swords that will be, but the one that Eugene released, the same images, but it's in, uh, he released it in English without the keywords. And um, what I do love about this tarot, of course, as you know me, I very much love my tarot de Marseille and I love woodblocky style, but this is a block style of art called Lubok, right, which is characteristic to Eastern Europe, I think late 1800s it was, love, that, love this page of uh, cups. And uh, also what I love about this deck, firstly, is that sense of humor, like style, yeah, the kind of old wood blocky, but different from, slightly different from Marseille style, but also the humor, the depiction of the characters, and also the fact that it's based on the uh, Russian folklore. And as you know, I was born in St. Petersburg, Russia, and I grew up between um, Russia and Belarus. And uh, I've used this deck a lot for myself and a bit for others as well. And uh, it always puts a smile on my face and um, reads wonderfully. So that was the Russian tarot Lubok. Next tarot is uh, the Ellis deck by Taylor, Taylor Ellis. And I was told again it's out of print, but it seems to be coming in print and out of print. There are these bags with cats, which I love. Now that I have a cat, more like yin yang looking uh, bags. And here are some of the cards. So while seemingly busy, uh, to me, this whimsical tarot is just so fun to read with. And it's full of uh, references that I attribute, like I call them yogic and elemental references that I draw from in this tarot. And uh, it's, um, again, oh, well, I'm showing sure chronological order, so it's kind of uh, one of my earlier tarot's, right, as well. But, uh, and I didn't expect to like it as much, but uh, as I read through the big PDF guidebook that comes with it as well, full of stories and explaining the choices behind, like art artistic choices in the cards, I absolutely fell in love with this tarot. And again, it's been in my top list for a few years now. Let's have a look, even the, although I don't read, like, I don't look at cards as uh, chakra referencing, but I do like depiction of the chakra and this empress cards you can see she's got chakras there the magician is very dexterous um i think i featured this magician as uh in my my top five magician cards and some sea creatures are depicted on a suit of cups where we have more boars for pentacles flying creatures and crows for the suit of swords but um, I absolutely love this whimsical Elias Diak moving on to another Slavic inspired tarot and this one is uh, one of the popular Diaks 
So this is uh, Tarot of the Golden Wheel, uh, illustrated with in watercolor like, uh, style, art style, illustrated by Mila Lasenka. And uh, this Tarot is based on, again, Slavic folklore, not only kind of exclusive to Russia, yet, right, but um, more kind of Slavic folklore and culture. So they have this Golden Wheel uh, bags, but this watercolor, this tarot is done so nicely and uh, and I know it's a cliche to say like how great, it's, it's such a great easy reader for me, but it really is. The illustrations are just fantastic. We will look at the Nine of Swords. This, this one is published by US Games, so it's a mass market tarot. And... Uh, Again, one of the decks that I use all the time. I love reading with it, with it especially uh, for ancestral readings. It's been like especially wonderful for me. So yeah, Tiero of the Golden Wheel. Next is, um, so we have here, which one is the already One, two, three, four, fifths, right? So uh, halfway almost mark so they are the wolf bags this one is um, the darkness of light terror created by Tony Di Mauro and um, mine is in linen cardstock I don't know why I actually use this deck but I don't often mention it on my channel but it's become one of my top forever decks I, uh, well, it's kind of on a darker side, uh, visually, right? I find it rather kind of dreamy and mysterious with absolutely exquisite illustrations, artwork. And um, this one, I trust it's kind of a blend of RWS and Thor's possibly, right? But I featured this Empress in my top five Empress cards only last week. I love her. And the fool is fantastic. But to me, while the card seems to be darker, for me it's all about that balance, right? Darkness of light. The balance of the darkness and the light with the titles of the majors are in Italian, which I love very much. <laughs> Quite partial to Italian language and Italian culture. So yeah, and I've had this deck for a few years as well, hence it's kind of removing, you know, to my most recent ones, more or less roughly from my memory, I organized them in chronological order. So that's that. And uh, moving on to well, the second half, right? I recently, my interest in herbalism reignited and uh, yeah herbalism and plant medicine so i kind of pulled my books out got extra ones signed up for a couple of courses on herbs so i have to of course bring out this tiara and this is the herb crafters tiara again published by us games this is a mass market deck with the artwork by Joanna Powell Colbert, the creator of the Guy and Tiero, with the guidebook uh, written beautifully by Leticia Guthrie, explaining all the herbs, plants uh, featured. I absolutely love those bags. And um, this Tiero I use more kind of regularly, right? So I kind of more look at the energetic properties of the plants depicted and then uh, the Tiero referencing is just extra bonus, right? But primarily I'm kind of more um, for my studies of the plants and just kind of recognizing energetics of the plants. But nevertheless, um, I wouldn't like to see my collection in my top 10 and if I have to spend a year away from all of my decks and that's in a way kind of the point of this video as I mentioned uh, when I talk about my top 10 for this video contemporary tarot decks but they are love this uh, for high priestess mark words but these decks that I'm sharing with you they are my essential ones right my survival <laughs> minimum <laughs> This is one of our cinnamon that heated herb. See, a beautiful illustrated. 
deck featuring a number of wonderful healing plants. And since I mentioned my interest in herbalism, next is my big love and my long-standing practice that, well, I practice yoga, right, since uh, 2006. So this is the sacred India Tierra, which of course is based on Indian tradition, on stories like Bhagavad Gita, right, uh, Mahabharata. And, uh, and of course, he has lots of yogic references provided that yoga being uh, an Indian spiritual practice. And um, I, this tiro, I've only used it for myself so far, but I find it very rich in yogic references, deities, uh, yogic teachings. And because yoga is such a big part of my life, I, of course, have to have a yogic-like tiro as well as my essential. But this one I absolutely love. I actually don't... Um, I, I do three card maximum with this tiro because it's a lot. And the guidebook that comes with that is uh, very extensive. Deities, the also guidebook features mantras, right, and tattvas and... Uh, but um, if you are interested, like, you know, if you're a yoga student, yoga practitioner, yoga teacher, and you love your tiro, this empress also featured last week in my top five empresses, empowered empresses. This is Lakshmi. But yeah, you may have a uh, you may want to have a look at this tiro if you are uh, Kali for um, death. We have uh, two death cards, two world cards in this tiro. So yeah, the sacred India Tiro. And then we have uh, the Tiro that I only, well, I, I was very generously gifted this Tiro, handmade Tiro, super luxurious Tiro. I only got it last year in September, towards the end of September when I was in Rome. And this one is uh, Itaroki, so it's a Visconti homage Tiro, paying homage to Visconti Tiro. And this Tiro, of course, is by Marco Benedetti, who's yeah, who I have become a huge fan of, but just, yeah, it's a handmade tiro. It's very shiny tiro. And uh, it's one of the, uh, well, this tiro is intelligently executed, right? And um, it may, as you can look at the coins, right? As you can look at characters there, it may be, uh, may look simple, right? At first sight, but it's deceivingly simple because it's not at all right it's just the, the style i uh, inspired by mannequins the um, art style in here is simple but uh, the diag is very very smartly executed um, of course inspired by visconti as you can see got gold foiling there it's very shiny i have a few videos where i featured this deck i have an interview with marco when i was in rome actually we sat down to talk about this terror and uh, it's become one of the very special decks to me it also comes which i absolutely love you know like if you love your historic decks it comes with this additional additional box with additional cards but also it explains the different depictions that we may see well it's marcus visconti homage but how some of the cards may differ between marseille charles six and bolognese terror tradition ercole d'este and minchiate and we do see See, like alternatives for the sun card, for the world card, for the stars. Yeah, the stars as star card, but we have a few star options. An absolute treasure this uh, tiro has become, and I don't think it will ever leave my top 10 list. 
and then two of my most recent ones i of course had to include um, the pips picture from uh, zara of kitten chops and this is zara second sierra or maybe it's third i think she had some ages only that but yeah peeps pick is her version of this adorable tiara de marseille i do have again an extensive video on this tiara when i talk compare it with um another historic well this one of course is not a historic a contemporary cute marseille compared with the historic one so being such an adorable tiro de marseille as peeps pick tiro is it's really well researched and it does follow very much traditional marseille lineage right or marseille tradition with the addition of plants and references to the plants that zara included for her deck but how can you not love this tiara just have a look at the little speckles there of gold as we see in the cards All the people cards are just absolutely adorable batons remind me of pencils strawberries right we feature delicious cups and uh, it's also gilded the card sizing is a little again smaller than um than a uh, uh, average tarot size which is very much in line with marseille done on delightful linen card stock i adore this tarot <laughs> love reading with it like love looking at it like love talking about it showing it off and the last one the last but not least is my most recent yak very very recent the newest one in my tarot collection but also i felt in my top 10 contemporary ones i absolutely had to include a fusion a hybrid between a rws and marseille tarot a deck that i see myself reading with and even though i had it now closer to two weeks probably over a week for sure um i um uh, i am including this tiara right so this one is the rider marseille tiara deck published by artisan tiara with the illustrations artwork done by alejandro a rosan once again only this week i did the text my extensive review the the backs of this tiara placing it side by side with the original rws and uh, a historic reproduction of a marseille tiara so you can have a look i will uh, include the link for you and i'll include all the decks that i mentioned for you just for the ease of it below um but I do like that, yeah, it's very much based after Rider Waite Smith tradition, but the peeps they do, uh, they are, de well, apart from the pentacles, of course, because in Marseille we have queens, but they are very much depicted in uh, the style of Marseille Tiero, even those cups, right? Chalices are very much like Marseille, and the uh, images done in that woodblocky style which is the characteristic of the um, 17th um, century decks, 17th, 18th century uh, Marseille tiaros. But also what I do like, this kind of tea staining, right, coffee stained, aged look of the cards, the coloration is nice, kind of muted colors, yet I find lots of warmth in them. So yeah, that's my 10th of the contemporary tarot decks that I don't think I will ever part with. And those were my top 10 contemporary tarot decks I don't see myself parting with. And I'm curious to hear whether we share any of these decks in common, whether they're historic ones featured in part one, linked for you below, whether the contemporary ones that you have just seeing i would love to hear what tarot decks you think you will never part with so please do leave a comment below or a post on instagram or perhaps a video where you share your ride or die decks that you don't see yourself ever letting go of and keeping in your tarot collections your forever right in regards to this feature i 
I, as I mentioned, I will revisit it next year and I'm already kind of excited about that. I thank you so much for being here today, sending much love to you all and I'll see you in the next one.